Hi, welcome to Alfresco 1 version 4.2. This is part 4 of our series. It's all about records management. I'm Gary Cox, and I'm a senior consultant with Bluefish Development Group. Previously, we talked about different new features of Share in Alfresco 4.2. However, this whole video is going to be dedicated to records management. We're going to talk about version 2.2, working with Alfresco 1 version 4.2. We'll provide an introduction to records management with Alfresco, a little bit of history behind the records management module, and the different versions of Alfresco they're compatible with. We'll go through creating a records management site and an overview of all the features of records management that's provided by Alfresco. Before we move into the demonstration, I want to talk a little bit about records management itself for those of you who may be Alfresco users but are new to records management. Basically, it's the process of managing the life cycle of important company information. And this could be paper, but in our case, this is going to be electronic documents. Some examples of this type of content would be contracts, invoices, employee documents, tax documents, and the like. Not all content is a record. In Alfresco, it's possible that only a small subset of your content will need to be declared as a record and maintained in the records management site. Records have a specific schedule for retention based on their classification. I provided a couple links here if you want more information about records management. Moving into records management in Alfresco, it's an optional module that can be added to Alfresco and it's deployed as custom AMP files that go into the Alfresco and Share wars. Records management is implemented as a single site in Alfresco. This allows for central management of all records in Alfresco. The records management site has some additional properties and features that are unique to RM. Records can be declared through an automated process or by user action. Filing of declared records can be performed by users or also by an automated process. A records manager can define a file plan with categories and nested categories, each with their own disposition schedules. These disposition schedules can be based on elapsed time or events or both. Custom events can be created if needed. There's also a search page, audit report, and user, repo user rights report available to obtain details on the activities in the records management site. It's important to remember, content declared as a record is moved to the RM site. However, a link remains in the ori original location, so the content is still easy to find by end users. Just to briefly go over some version history of records management in Alfresco. The first version was released in 2009, 1.0. In 2012, 2.0 was released, and this allowed for in-place record declaration. 2.1 was released in 2013, followed by 2.2 .2 in 2014. We're going to demonstrate 2.2 today. It's important to know that it requires at least version 4.2.2 of Alfresco 1. The 2.3 version of RM should be coming out in 2015. All of the above versions are DOD 5015 certified. Before moving into our demonstration, I want to go over the topics that we'll cover today. We'll start with the creation of the records management site, and that will be followed by how to import sample data. Then we'll have a tour of the records management site itself. That will be followed by discussion of categories and their disposition schedules. We'll make use of the sample data to show some examples, but we'll also create our own category and disposition schedule. That will be followed by a declaration of a record, showing both a user action and also automated process, and then the process of filing records. And again, we'll use user filing and automated filing. And we'll go through completing a record. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about the records management tools that are available, including search, audit reports, and user rights reports. And now we're going to move over to our Alfresco environment to start the demonstration. Okay, here we are logged into Alfresco. I'm logged in as a user called Records Manager. Now that the AMPs have been installed, I can create my records management site. So if I go to Sites and Create Site, there's a new type available beside Collaboration Site. If I click here, I can see there's also a records management site available. When I select that, it actually autofills the name and URL name for the site. But one more step is required before I can create my site. I need to decide on my compliance level. RM 2.2 has added a standard compliance level in addition to DOD 5015. The standard level has a smaller, level, a smaller number of required metadata fields. So if you don't need all of the metadata that DOD 5015 requires, you may consider using this level. 
However, for this example today, we're going to use the DoD 5015. So I select that and then hit OK, and my site will be created. Once it's created, I'll be taken to the site, and I can actually go in and view my file plan. So from this point, you can actually start working on the file plan or import the example file plan from Alfresco. One final note before we move on. I showed here when creating a records management site the standard and DoD 5015 compliance levels. These are available out of the box. However, it is also possible to create your own custom compliance levels if needed. If you create your own custom level, it'll show up here as one of the available choices in the Dropbox. So rather than starting completely from scratch with my file plan, I'm going to make use of some Alfresco test data that's provided. This test data provides a sample file plan that you can use. Now, it's certainly not required that you install this test data, but if you just want to see an example file plan, it's a good place to start. So to install the data, if you go to Customize Dashboard on your Records Management site, you can add the RM Dataset Import Dashlet, and I've added it here to my dashboard. So when I go back to my Records Management Dashboard, the Import Dataset Dashlet is now available. If I can select a data set, you can see there's a DOD 5015 example data set, and I'm going to import that. Once that's finished importing, if I go over to File Plan, you can see several different categories have been created. So we can use these as examples for our demonstration. Before moving further into the demonstration, I wanted to do a brief tour of the records management site. In many ways, it looks like a regular share site. However, records management sites have additional features that are worth noting. First of all, there's a file plan instead of a document library. And this is where your categories are contained. And these categories may have subfolders as well as subcategories as well. You can navigate by clicking on the, the category name or by clicking through the navigation panel on the left side. There's also the ability to quickly find unfiled records, holds, or transfers as needed. There's a set of saved searches that are available out of the box, but you can add additional ones as needed. Records Management has its own custom search feature. It lets you constrain your search through a variety of metadata fields, and then specify which metadata values you want in the result set that's returned. Results are displayed in a tabular form here. We currently don't have any data in the system, but later in the demo we'll come back to this once we've added a few records. Records Management also has a tools console where you can run an audit report that can display detailed activity in the system. The audit report itself can be filed as a record if needed. You can also add custom metadata, define custom roles, although there are several out-of-the-box roles already provided, set up email mappings to store your emails as records, utilize out-of-the-box events or create your own new events, which we'll demonstrate during this process later on. Add values for supplemental markings or transfer locations. Set up relationships and run a user rights report. This gives you a granular view of which users have roles in the system. So that's it for the quick tour. Let's go on to the demonstration. We're going to start with setting up our file plan. Since we've imported the sample data, we have a set of categories, subfolders, and subcategories already created for us. So we can use those as an example. However, then we're going to go through the process of creating a new category and then filing documents into that category. You can see the folders with this icon are categories. These don't have disposition schedules, but if we drop down one level, you can see with this icon that all of these categories do have disposition schedules. If you click in, you can actually view details and see the disposition schedule for a given category. When you create a disposition schedule, you can define the disposition authority and provide instructions here, and then provide the actual disposition steps. In this case, records that are filed into AIS audit records are cut off at the end of one month, and then will be destroyed one month later. You also have the ability to define whether these are vital records and need periodic review. In this case, these are. So these, this sample data provides a good starting point 
for reference. Now we're going to go through a demonstration where we file invoices. The first thing we need to do is set up a category for this and then create a disposition schedule. We're also going to create subfolders under invoices based on the fiscal year. Once we've done that, I'll demonstrate adding records directly into the records management site and then by declaring records either manually or programmatically from an accounting site. So let's create our category for invoices. First I set up the name and title, and notice the category identifier is created automatically. You are able to edit this at the time of creation if you want to, but once it's been set, you cannot go back and change it. If needed, you can indicate these records are vital records. In our case, they're not, so we're just going to hit save. And then we're going to create a, a disposition schedule. Normally, when you create a disposition schedule, you'd refer back to a disposition authority for these, this category. Uh, we're just going to use demo here because this is just a demonstration. And we're going to say cut off at fiscal year, destroy after three years. Then you have the choice of applying this disposition to the subfolders, basically record folder, or to the individual records themselves. Since we're going to have fiscal year folders underneath our invoices folder, we're going to apply this to record folder. So I'm going to hit save and then create the actual steps. So the first step needs to either be retain or cut off. So we're going to have a cutoff step that's basically based on the end of the fiscal year. You can also add an event. We'll go back and do that uh, after creating this first step. So we're going to add an event here and we'll just say case complete. We're going to use this as a placeholder. We're actually going to create a custom event in just a moment. Notice this is an OR, so whichever is earlier. So we're going to save this step and then add another step for, destru for destruction. And we're going to hold this for three years after the cutoff date. And in this case we're not going to ma maintain metadata after destruction. So we'll save these steps. Once that's done, we can create our subfolders. So I'm just going to create a folder manually. Then I'm going to demonstrate how you can automatically generate folders as well. But we're going to create a 2014 folder and hit save. This is the icon indicating that this is a, fold, a record folder versus a category. Notice the folder is still open. If you close it, you can no longer add records to the folder. We're going to go in here, and I'm actually going to show importing a record directly. We're going to use the file command. We're going to import an electronic record. And I'm going to drag in an invoice. And it's already entered into the record management site. Now, you can complete the record, but notice when I try to do that, it tells me that metadata is still required. So we're going to edit the metadata, and I'm going to set required fields here. And then we can complete the record. Once the cutoff criteria is met, you'll see a cutoff action available. Now after doing this, I'm going to demonstrate how to get records created from another site. So one of the great features about records management in Alfresco is that you can declare records in place if needed. We just showed an example of uploading a record into the records management site, but now we're going to declare a record from another site. So I've created an accounting site as an example here, and I have some invoice folders. In our manual example, I'm going to show you how to declare a record as a user. And then we'll go through a process where we go through basically an automated declaration process. And that way, the user isn't required to do anything. The record's generated automatically. So let's go into manual example. Let's say I have an invoice here. Basically, the user just needs to go to declare as record. Once they've done that, the record icon appears, and the record has been generated. Now, at this point, we haven't set up any rules or anything for filing. So if we go back to the records management site, into the file plan, 
we see it shows up as an unfiled record. Now we can file this record just like that and then once we've done that if we go view the record we can complete it just like we did the other record. So that was a pretty much a manual process all the way through. It was manually declared a record and then once in the unfiled records we had to manually determine how to file it. And it's certainly feasible to, to work this way. However, it's possible to automate both the, both the declaration and the filing of records. So now we're going to demonstrate that process. So we demonstrated uploading records directly and manually declaring a record in place. Let's talk about an automated process. So here we have an invoice and I put a simple workflow on it just to basically say it's been completed. So we're going to move that off and it goes into this automated record creation folder. And you can see without the user doing anything the invoice has been declared as a record. If we look at the rule for this folder there's basically a declare action declare as record action and at the time you declare the record you can decide whether you want to hide the record or not. If you say no there will be a link from the record to the site still so it's easy for the user to still find the invoice. The link still remains in the invoices automated folder. If you decide to hide the record then the record will be moved to the record management site and there will not be a link provided here. Now, much like the first case, this record has gone off to the unfiled record site because we still haven't set up any automated rules for filing. So again, we have an unfiled record here. And we can file this one just like we did before. So you can see, without the user having to do anything, the, rec the record was declared automatically by a rule in the folder and then moved to unfiled records. Now our next step, we're going to go one step further not only declare the record automatically, but try to file it as well. There are a lot of ways you could do this. We're just going to use uh, the name as an indicator of how to file a record. And this is a, a demo use case, but you can imagine creating com more complex rules as needed. So we'll show that now. In our last example, we demonstrated automatically declaring a record by rule. However, even though that part of the process was automated, there was no automation on the file plan, so the record simply went to unfiled records. Now we're going to demonstrate how you can add a rule to the unfiled records to automatically file records as they come in. It's important to remember this is just a simple example, but it is possible to create nested folders in unfiled records and have a complex series of rules that determine file, how to file incoming records. In our case, we're just going to go to manage rules, we've created a rule to file invoices. Now because I'm just using the out-of-the-box model and everything, an easy way to demonstrate this was just to look for documents that begin with the name invoice. And if they meet that name, these both these criteria are met, then the document will be filed to this path, invoices and then fiscal year. Now one of the neat features here with the rules are you can use template variables. And we're going to use date.year.long, so for example, 2015. Now in our invoices category, we don't currently have a FY space 2015 folder. So we're going to say, yes, create record path. If you put no here and the folder didn't exist, then you get an error thrown. So now we've created a rule to automatically file our incoming record. We can go back to the accounting site. And this time I'm just going to copy my record, my uh, document directly into this folder where it gets declared rather than using a two-step process. It should work either way, but this is an easier demonstration. So I'm going to drag my document over. And you can see again, because of the rule on this folder, the document's automatically declared as a record. If I wanted to, I could hide this to hide the link. However, I'm going to leave it here. And when I go to the records management site, if I go into the file plan and unfiled records, you can see there's nothing there. Now if I go into invoices, 
you can see that a new folder called FY 2015 has been created and my invoice has been filed there. And then I can go through and add the metadata that's required and complete the record as needed. Now earlier we had created a disposition schedule for invoices and I mentioned that you can create custom events. We just used one of the out-of-the-box events, but I'm going to go through the process of creating a custom event and adding that. If you go to Records Management Tools and to the Events list, you can add new events as needed. A simple event will just appear on either the record or the record folder where a user can select it and cause the event to be fired. You can create new events. It's important to know when you do create a new event, um, you cannot go back and delete it. It's permanently added. But we're going to create one just as an example. We'll call it manual cutoff for this example. And it's a simple event. So I'm going to save this event and go back to my folder. And then we're going to add this event to our move the existing event and add that event it's our simple event here so now we have manual cutoff as an event now this is at the folder level so I should be able to cut this off at the folder level now once you once you've fired an event on the folder level all the records contained within that folder are also cut off so right now we don't have a cutoff option action if I go to fiscal year 2014. When I open this up, I can see there is actually an, our manual cutoff event available. So I'm just going to hit complete. So now, rather than waiting on the time variable for cutoff, an event has been fired. And notice I can now cut off this folder because the event has been fired. If I cut off the folder, all the documents that are contained in that folder will also be cut off. Now if you do a, try to do a cutoff action and the, doc, the records contained in the folder are not complete, the cutoff action will not succeed. But I've gone through and completed the records contained in this folder, so it should succeed. And you can see it's now been cut off. I don't have any events set up for the destroy step, but you could add them to that step if needed. And when I go into the folder now, you can see all of the records contained in this folder have been cut off as well automatically. So that's just a very simple example of using an event um, alongside a time variable for the disposition schedule. Now that we've added some records to our records management site, we can actually perform a, a record search and get back some search results. I'm going to do a very simple query where I look for the name field. And again, I'm going to look for the word invoice. And I'm going to leave the standard metadata settings in place. When I search, you can see a nice tabular result set. Notice I only see three documents that have come back. Go back to our criteria, you can see that I've asked to only return records that are completed. So I have several records that are in the system that have not yet been completed. So let's include incomplete. And now you can see I have an additional record that shows up. If needed, you can actually do ordering and also save a search as needed and then use it later. And now you can see it appears under Save Searches. The results that comes right back. This is a really powerful tool for searching within records in the records management site. The last feature we want to demonstrate today is the ability to put a hold on records. And you notice in the file plan, you're able to click on holds to see if there are any active holds. There aren't any currently, so we're going to create a new hold for demonstration. And we'll just call it legal hold. Once you've created a, a hold, you can add records to that hold. So let's go into our 2014. 
and we're going to add these two records to a hold. Now that I've created a new hold, I can select it from the list and put it on hold. Notice the hold icon, which looks like a snowflake, basically a freeze, has been added to these two documents. If I click on holds and go into legal hold, I can actually see what documents are held as part of this active hold. So this is a good free feature if you need to freeze documents from being deleted uh, as part of a hold. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Coming up next, in the last video of this series, will contain a, a wrap-up of new features, including some information about CMS 1.1 and some of the differences between it and CMS 1.0. Again, thanks for watching.